Hey, this is uh, MacHeads101. Welcome to your 14th Java tutorial. And today I'm going to be talking about a little comp it's a complicated topic, which is inheritance and polymorphism. And um, it's kind of hard to explain what it is, but um, you'll see as I'm doing all this stuff. And as you can see, I created two more classes. One's called Super Class. And one's called third, which is just our third class. And you'll see why I call this super class in a second. So, um, first I'm just going to be showing what inheritance is. So, let's say in super class, I made a method public void print. And in here I just printed out hello world. Alright? Now... Here's the important part of inheritance. There is a way I can call this method using an object from this class, even if the method's not in this class, and this is inheritance. I have to write extends, and then the name of the class, which is super class. And extends is for classes, and implements is for interfaces. We're not going to be using implements right now, but later on you will see implements. So I'm telling you, implements means it's an interface. Extends is for a class. And if I write here, extends um, super class. All right. So the, here's the method. The print method is in super class. These two methods are I mean, classes are blank. They have no methods, but they extend super class. So if in here I made a, let's say I made a second object, and I do s.print, I'm not getting an error. This is blank. There's no methods in here, but yet I'm calling a method from that class. How? Because it extends super class. And the name for this is actually a super class, which is why I called it super class. And the method is in here. But the, if they extend super class, the methods are in these classes. They're just not explicitly written in there. So if I run this, <clears throat> hello world. So now um, I'm going to talk about overriding now. So what overriding is, if I have a print method, if I have a method in here with the same name, this is print. This is, I'm going to make another public void print. And I'm going to print out hello world from second class. Okay? So now, if I call the print method from the second class second s equals new second s dot print this print method um overrides the print method in the super class but this doesn't have a method to override it so if i made a a third object and t dot print this is going to print the method from this class because it's not been overwritten. And this is going to print this method because it overwrote the print method from the super class. So when I run this, hello world from second class and hello world, which is um, the method from the super class and hello world from second class is the method that overwrote the method from the super class. Okay? So now... I'm going to show you something really cool. It's called a polymorphic array. Okay? So let's say I had my object second s equals new second and third t equals new third. I can make an array and this array is going to be of the type, the data type is going to be super class because it's going to be an array of objects. So super class, and I'll call a r r y, telling I'm going to be working with an array, equals, and then in here, I'm going to put s, 
and T. So now, this is an array holding objects of, holding these objects. And now, look at this, for int i equals zero, i is less than or equal to, um, actually less than, sorry, ary dot length i plus plus, and I'm going to call, um, what's it called, um, air y i dot print and what this is going to do all right so this one has an overwritten method and this one's just going to be using the method from the super class so i have an array list of these objects so when i call the print method from s right when i call a print method from s it's going to um print the overwritten method and when i call the print method from t, it's going to print the method from the super class. Now, I made an array with these objects. I looped through the array, and um, so this is going to be equal to zero, so it's going to call s.print, and then when it equals one, it's going to call t.print. So it's going to be looping through and calling all these methods, and there we go. Hello world from second class, and hello world. And that is called a polymorphic array, okay? And um, that's all for the first polymorphism tutorial. And in the second tutorial, I'm going to be going a little more. I'm going to be talking about abstract classes and um, probably something else. So see you next time.